Hi, welcome to the bathtub. It's the old masturbator and the old masturbator's dog, Lucky the Wonder Dog, who's the subject of this episode today. Um, anyway, I was a little nervous to pick her up, as I'll tell you in a few minutes. But I'm going to play the theme song. And stop it really quick so, so we don't get sued by Peabody and Sherman. And Lucky's up here to say hi because she still wants to get up here all the time. Are you ready to get down now? Do you want to get down or do you want to stay up here? What do you want to do? Okay. We're to, we're, our, our episode today is, this is one of our, our pointless adventures in literature. Um, it's not really about literature. It's about our crazy dog, Lucky. I often call her crazy, but never more so than lately. And it's not, it's not our normal show. It's a little, frankly, it's a little depressing. I, I, find, it, I find it kind of sad. We're having difficulties with Lucky. And uh, I thought I'd tell you about them just because I ha I've had trouble actually doing my uh, my reading or my shows, because my pointless shows. Anyway, to, to stick with the old theme song, this is a pointless adventure in literature. Uh, sometimes they're pointless, sometimes they're meaningless. Sometimes they're both pointless and meaningless, but they're always pointless, meaningless, or both. And this is Lucky the Wonder Dog, who used to join us quite a bit in the bathtub. We used to do a segment called, called uh, Puppy Noir. Some, some of you remember. And that was one of my favorite segments. Oh, my darling. And Lucky was featured in those. And we used to play, uh, when she was a puppy, I used to play the theme song from, uh, from uh, Peter, the Peter Gunn theme song. And Lucky would sit up here and wrestle with me. Anyway, um, this is not a normal episode. It's kind of depressing, frankly. If you do, dogs, dog stories, Sad stories about dogs are always depressing. And uh, I find this one particularly depressing. So I thought I'd tell you anyway because it's it's been kind of in the background of the bathtub for for a few years now, which is why Lucky stopped coming to the she stopped showing up at our our puppy noir shows, and uh, I'll I'll tell you a little bit I'll tell you a little of the background here. So about five years ago, we got Lucky at at the woods at the humane sort of the local humane society. It's a really nice organization. They run really well. We got her about she was about two months old. And we we showed her on the show a few times. She looked like a little bat. We used to make jokes about the way she looked. I hope that's not the reason she has trouble. But we, we she was a little bat. And when we went to get her, we were looking for a puppy. We were told it was going to be a small part Yorkshire Terrier. My wife always wanted a Yorkshire Terrier. And they said it was a Yorkshire Terrier mix. There's no Yorkshire Terrier. There's no Yorkshire Terrier in Lucky at all. This is about this is about as comfortable as she gets in my lap right now, and she she might flare up. I don't know. She was very difficult as a puppy, and she, when we went in to sit with her to get to know her, she was just constantly biting and, and attacking everything, and just was freaked out, freaked out little puppy, about two months old, and we don't know exactly how old she. Was. I I don't think they knew. They found her in the desert. She was part of a, a litter. She was. There were feral dogs. I'm pretty sure because Lucky has a feral streak in her, which is our big problem. And uh, they found her. They brought her out, and she was such a difficult little puppy. You know how most puppies. She was cute in a way, but she was so difficult and so constantly aggressive that we were really a little nervous about getting her. And I, my wife was <laughs> Lucy was a little dismayed by her, and Lucy loves dogs. So we sat and talked about it quite a bit, but Lucy felt really bad about leaving this puppy. And so you know, I kept saying, I could tell she was a little diffident, and she was, she's kind of got good instincts. So we, we decided finally to take Lucky home, and she was okay. She was a very difficult little puppy. She did pretty well at crate training. She did that well. She was very good at house training. She went outside. Did very, Do you want to get down? It's okay. You get down. Go ahead. That's okay. Um, it's okay. You did very well. It was a very good, good, good uh, episode with you, Lucky. This is my my great T-shirt. So to, to to keep with this this too long story, which I warn you, I guess, if you just want to hear the normal silliness about things. There you go. You get comfortable over there. Is uh, we took her home and we 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 raised her. We gave her all the love we could. And we we had lots of trouble with her. We had real trouble eat, getting her to eat. She didn't like, she was very suspect. She wanted to go out and eat anything in the street, and we couldn't get her to eat anything in the house. Dodo, it's not about you. Please be quiet. And uh, we br I brought her into the show on the show, and, and then I had the idea of Puppy Noir, which I still love. That was my favorite. I used to love filming the pu Puppy Noir thing when Lucky would go crazy, and we'd play the, my, the Peter Gunn theme song, and we'd talk about, we'd talk about uh, 
hard-boiled literature. Anyway, so the, lucky we did that. We did that for with lucky for about a year. I think we did those episodes. Cheers, cl- cruel, uh, cruel light of day, pure spring water. But one of the things I found, because I was taking Lucky out for most of her walks, is she was really hard to walk. And we took her into training. We went to puppy training at the at the woods place where we got her. And Dota's upset over there, but she's not get center attention. And uh, we took her to pup, the training sessions, and then COVID hit, and we stopped going. She was, we would go to the classes. She did okay. She was. She, she was op- opening up, and she was very scared. She, they used to have to put her in a little special section so she could look at everybody. She was frightened of everything, this dog. And uh, when we, and so finally COVID hit, and we couldn't go anywhere. And for a year or two, we were out of any classes, and I would take Lucky for walks. And try, I tried to do all the stuff they train you with, with scared dogs. I mean, we'd had, I've had many dogs, and I had, our last dog was just the most beneficent, beautiful little dog. We never had any trouble with old Misty. And uh, Lucky was always scared of stuff. And if we walked down the road, if there was a car going by or she, a, a lizard, if a lizard popped out of the brushes, L- Lucky would literally leap into the air. And then I would leap into the air because I was so startled as well. And we had all sorts of issues getting her out. It was very hard to walk her but, and try to train her to be outside. And usually if my wife and I went with her, that was about the only time Lucky kind of enjoyed the walks. Otherwise, everywhere I took Lucky, she was constantly looking over her shoulder. If we saw a person walking down the street, literally across the street or on our side of the street, Lucky would st- stand stock still in the road and watch the person until they left. She would watch them going past them. Uh, there was one time when I was up, I was walking her up near the school, and I would walk by some guy's house. And when we walked by this guy's house, if he was coming in or out of the house, Lucky would do that. She would just stand and stare at him. And the guy, the guy literally turned to me and he said, you know, your dog stares at people. I said, yeah, I do. I tried to make a joke of it because the guy was obviously upset. And I said, yeah, she does it to everybody. And he said, oh, oh well, you know, he muttered. He was pretty upset. He sounded a little crazy to myself. But, but I understood how he meant because everywhere we would go, Lucky would just stop and watch them go by. So anyway, we, we she grow she grows up. She's she gets very fixated in places for for safety, and about a year into doing the silly uh, puppy noir segments, Lucky would not come in here. I used to make jokes about it, but she wouldn't come into this office. Partly it was Dodo, but even before Dodo came, in fact, Dodo, I may leave the office if you want to shut up. Lucky would go and hide in a clo- in, in in my wife's closet. She had two places she loved to hide. One was in the closet, and she would stay there all... If my wife was out of the house, she was very connected to Lucy because Lucy fed her and babied her and always bought her toys. Lucky loves toys and getting toys. And uh, she would go in the closet, and I wouldn't see her all day. And if I wanted to take her for a walk, she would not come out. I would often, often for many years, I would have to wait till Lucy came home. When she came back from work, Lucky would come running downstairs to see her, and then I could kind of trick her into going for a little walk. And and over the years, when I was with her by myself, I just despaired of taking her very far. I tried the trick where you feed them a little bit and you move them along, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I did I did as much as I could, and I, I would lose my patience sometimes. And I would just take her out. I have to say I, I feel bad about, it, but I would just take her. You got to go outside. And she wanted to pee and poo. She was always very good about going out, to, but she had to go to the bathroom. She was the best of any dog I've ever had at that. She really wants to go out and do that. And she wakes me up in the middle of the night if she if she has to go. So she's always been good about that. But this fear thing never got any better. And we were always, I was really, Lucy didn't see it as much because when we were all three together, Lucky could handle it. She was kind of fun to go out with and she would go, well, she wasn't fun, never fun to take out, but she would go for the walk and she would try to get back as soon as possible. Um, if we were taking, some of the things, there's so many things that frightened her. But for example, we would take her to this one park she loves. It's a, we call it Green Park, but it's, I forget the name of it. It's in, it's in Slow up near Broad Street. And we would take her there. It's pretty quiet. There's not much noise there. And most of the other people, their dogs, they don't let their dogs. They're not really noisy. And there's no football k- kids playing. There's not a lot of noise. And Lucky tends to like that. But the train, the slow, the, ta- the train Amtrak that comes into slow would send that, that horn. 
And as soon as Lucky would hurt, she would just p try to pull us home, pull us back to the car. And we would try to take her for a walk. And you couldn't even, I couldn't even give her food. You know, the, the, what they tell you is to give them a really good treat that kind of relaxes them while the noise is going on. She wouldn't even, we couldn't even get her to eat the treat. This is, and we tried so many different treats. We were actually, we actually now, we're, we actually fry fresh chicken and salmon. <laughs> So best we can get out of her, because normal treats she won't take. She also had terrible skin allergies, so we would go. She was often going to the vet more than she could handle, because she was easy. She was very scared of the vet, and she had really bad skin allergies. And we've had to give her for for give her, She was on different medications. I don't know if it was any good or not, uh, but we started putting her on this kind of special. We had to give her a shot every week, but we started off giving her shots every other day. And after a couple of years, that also aggra aggravated these fear mechanisms in Lucky, which we finally ended up after. We actually ended up gave up giving her the shots a, a few months ago. So the train would, would scare her. Once we took her to Cambria and we got out of the car and there were roofers. This is the, well, there's many things that scare her, but if someone's on a roof hammering, Lucky just totally freaks out. And, and she pulled, I mean, this little dog almost pulled me up the road. I tried to get her away from the hammering so that she could relax and go for a walk. She could, we literally had to get her back in the car and move the car away from the roofers. So these are just some of the things, but every day, if a sports car goes by, or a motorcycle, or, you know, never, 4th of July, God save us all, 4th of July, she just freaks, totally freaks. We've tried all sorts of things, and we started going back into training, And, and but, a, but about a year ago, we started getting much more aggressive freakouts from Lucky. So taking her for a walk, if I was taking her out for a walk on my own without Lucy coming home, she would just go nuts. And she was she never bit me. She never was aggressive against me, but she would snarl at me and threaten me. She was so scared. And the long the, the what what continues we so we tried trade I started calling around, describing these things to our we talked to our vet, we talked to trainers, and we talked to Several and and she started at about a year ago. She actually bit us. She actually would snap at us, and she didn't hurt us at first. She just would bite us, bite the pants, or usually bite the leash. There was a lot of aggression against the leash, but a lot of our shoes or something that that she seemed to know that wasn't going to hurt us so much. But after about about six or eight months ago, she actually bit us. She was so terrified about going out. And I can't remember what there was. What it was both. I think both. They were often just trying to take her for a walk, and you know, and if I try to take her for a walk when she wasn't just going to run downstairs, putting her lead on, putting her leash on, uh, taking it off sometimes, denying her uh, her toys. That was the other thing. She was fixated ever since she was a puppy. If we gave her a new toy or a Kong, the thing was always to give her a Kong, and she could have that as her own toy. But she wouldn't eat the Kong, and she still does this. She would guard it and stare at us, threatening like we were going to steal her Kong after we gave it to her. Or if Lucy bought her a new toy, she would go hide somewhere with the toy, and we couldn't get her out for six, for six eight hours sometimes because she was guarding this toy. So anyway, we've, done, we've been through all the training. We know you're not supposed to let the dog treat the toy like theirs. We've gone through all those different things over the years. And we brought in new trainers, and we uh, we have a wonderful trainer now. She came out about two or three months ago, and she helped us work with Lucky. Lucky heard a car go by, just jumped. And but the aggression towards us got worse, so it's gotten to the point where actually just I'm like even picking her up. She comes to me. She really wants to get up because she hears the the thing that she used to say hi to everybody, and yet there's a side of her that looks like she's gonna sn snap at me. And I have, I have no idea. We don't even know anymore when it's going to come. So we start to go. So we go see this. We see I get a really good trainer. She does what she can. Uh, the attack. She actually got really bad about six weeks ago. Just really aggressive, and it was constantly coming out of nowhere. And fine. And she bit. She bit Lucy. I mean, she, which is very unusual because Lucy was is her. It's like her shining star. I'm. I'm. She will abide me, but she loves Lucy. And she likes being with her in the garage. But it got to the point where, again, Lucy has a place in the garage for Lucky to sit when she's art, doing her art. And as soon as she gets into it, she starts staring. Lucy told me about this months ago, staring at her with this weird look in her eye. I, I thought Lucy was exaggerating a bit. 
but I have seen it now. She just looks kind of crazy, and she doesn't want to get out of that room. So after this is a long, uh, the, the end of the story, I think there is an ending to this story. I don't know where, where we're going to go with Lucky. We took our, our uh, trainer and our, our vet, so they decided to put her on a, uh, anti-anxiety medication. It's like human medicine. And I don't know if it's helped. We've been on it for a few, several weeks now. And we've done training sessions. She really enjoys the training and she likes the, the kind of rigorous, she's very quick at learning things. But the aggression stuff hasn't, hasn't helped, hasn't stopped <laughs> Our vet told us to go to the only behaviorist, someone with a behaviorist, animal behavior degree, and she, it, there are very few of them in, this, in the country, and there's only one in the, in the county. We went and saw this doctor, and we went in and saw her. She was, I'm sure she's very good at her job. I'm not going to say good or bad. I don't know. Um, but we talked to many trainers. We talked to one trainer who told us, two or several trainers, who, when we described the problems, we said we should use the e-collar, the shock collars. They're, they call them shock collars, but some people say they're not really shocks. I don't know. But we were very worried about that. And there was also the one, one of the trainers who sounded like he knew how to... He said he, he seemed the most confident. He basically said we had to keep Lucky really in a puppy playpen or a crate. She shouldn't be out wandering around by herself at all. And, you know, that's part of our life. We have a dog in the house with you and, you know, be with you and so forth. So uh, we we talked to different trainers who suggested that. We finally went to this behaviorist. We sat and talked to this woman for about 20 minutes, uh, or about maybe 20, 20, 30 minutes. And Lucky got up on the sofa and stared at Lucy in this way that she does when she's a little nervous and she's, but she wants something from Lucy. And the doctor saw it. And Lucy said, this is the look that scares me. <laughs> the doctor looked and said, oh, yeah, she's pathological. She called her pathological dog. Now, I don't, again, I don't know. I have no idea. We put her on the medication. I'm against giving dogs, like, the idea of giving anti-anxiety medication strikes me as a little crazy. But at the same time, we're really trying everything. Because we, we're, we're afraid to go near her a lot of time. And yet she really wants us to be near her. And then she's afraid of us all the time. And we're just at, we're at our wits end. So that's the entire story. That, so we so at the point, we're still doing the training. The other thing the behaviorist said, and she didn't really say it directly, but she was pretty firm. She was, her opinion was pretty firm, which was that this type of behavior is, is not normal. She, can, she talked about our dog, Lucky, like he, she was not, like people talk about Donald Trump, right? It's not normal. He's pathological. She, she's not, we'll try the medication, but she didn't have high hopes for it. She didn't think it would work. She didn't think training would work, which we're doing. And she just thought that... Uh, um, she really was saying that you can't live with this dog. You may have to put her to sleep. At that, she didn't put it that put it in that way. So anyway, for the past several weeks now, Lucy, I've been very depressed. We're trying to do our best for this crazy dog. We've heard lots of different opinions. Every day is a challenge. Um, I I get up at these days now. The only time Lucky wants to go anywhere is when Lucy goes to work. She wants to get in the car. She really likes to get in the car with us. And that's about the only time she's excited about going out of the house. So I've started to work her walks around uh, my, my wife's job, which is a really beautiful area. It's very quiet. There's, there's less stressful noises there. And taking her out in the morning, and then we would get Lucy in the evening. And that she, I, don't have to, I don't have to try to force her to go outside. And she's, she's working out. And she's getting more exercise. And they put her on these meds, which are not the strict. They're not the high. We haven't gone to the top end of them yet. This is just the starter, starter ideas, try checking her out, see how it works. I don't know that they've helped. She's not as crazy as she was six weeks ago when we were afraid to go near her. But she's doing her best. She's asleep now here. We're doing a lot of the old, fa old you know, the old, most of you know the story. You're not supposed to let dogs on the furniture and all this stuff. We, we rarely let her on the furniture, but sometimes we, we let her up. And uh, we're, we're, we're still trying to keep her in our life. But just yesterday, Lucy just was afraid to bring her into the studio to, when she's doing paintings and stuff because she just, she won't leave. We actually started keeping her downstairs because in the mornings, we would leave her upstairs and went with one of us in, 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 the, in one of the two bedrooms and we would keep an eye on her and we'd put a bed down for her. But she wouldn't leave the room. She, we, we'd have to literally just lead her out of the room. 
So we don't know what to do anymore, and I'm not expecting any of you to know, and I'm sure everybody's got opinions about what to do with dogs, but all we've done is done our best. It's very hard to read, so I haven't been reading. I read, I'm not reading as much. I'm not doing many of these, these talks, but I'm going to try to get back to them and keep Lucky as long as we can. We're doing our best for her. Just want you to know, that's why Puppy Noir, this is the demise of Puppy Noir, I, I'm, I'm actually a little nervous, even just getting her up on my lap there. She, she looked a little, a little uh, like she was about to turn in a way. Okay, stay safe. Sorry that was a depressing one. Don't, don't, this is, this is not the normal uh, bathtub. We'll try to do something completely stupid and another pointless adventure in literature, which is really pointless and not sad. Okay. <laughs>